video. So for this one, I'm going to be taking you through trade management. And essentially, it's all good and fair if I teach you the best entry techniques and the best sniper concepts for you to get into the market in the best position and how to get the best risk to reward and maximize your profits and everything entry. But it's just as important, probably even more important to understand how to manage a trade after you've got in. Entering the trade is the easy part. You literally press the button, bam, you're in the trade, right? But the the psychological battle and the emotional um, battle really sets in after you've entered the trade because that's when your money's on the line. That's when you face the financial con the financial consequences of the trade. So understanding how to manage your trade really well and having like a set uh, list of rules that you follow after you've obviously entered the trade is is the best way to kind of like um remove any emotional barriers and like you just will have a, a better kind of understanding a more relaxed understanding you'll kind of be more confident after you've taken the trade you kind of know what you're doing it's not just oh i've entered and you know fingers crossed so let's just get right into it um let's just say a buy position yeah so let's say we have a downtrend in market like so yeah like this obviously coming down and then we have a nice um have a nice SC here, yeah. So obviously, after the SC, what you're looking for is a nice strong reaction to the upside. Uh, break that level of structure, yeah. So what you, you what you're obviously looking for is a return into this sponsored candle before you look to enter the trade, yeah. Now keep in mind this obviously has to be a strong reaction. If you don't have the strong reaction, go down to some of the lower time frames. You'll probably be able to identify that. But let's just say this is a really, really nice SC and everything's perfect. Uh, let's just say, obviously, we took out some double bottom. Oh, we took out some, let's just say we took out some double bottoms in the past. Uh, like so. And now we came down, we purged those equal, equal lows. Beautiful SC formation here. Yeah. So you're going to enter here. All right and your stop loss is right below the low obviously let's just say your take profit is at this external range liquidity up here yeah <clears throat> so let's just say this now comes down like so and taps your entry bang you're in the trade now the most important thing to do is to wait for this bos here now, what this will essentially mean is that this entire downtrend is now invalid, yeah? Because if if we break this level of structure, if, if obviously you guys have gone to the, if you guys have watched the market structure video, what we're going to do is this. We're going to create a new market structure to the upside. And that's what we want. We, wanna, we, want, we want this whole swing to be invalidated, yeah? But the most important area to look for is that last low. And let's just say, let's just say you got in here, this would be the last low that you're looking for. Because theoretically, this could have potentially been a liquidity purge and we could have actually mitigated an, an inefficiency here. And this is going to start moving to the downside, right? But if your trade is valid, then uh, this last point here is the most important point to kind of keep an eye on. So obviously when you enter the trade, you need to strictly monitor this level. And what you want to do is mark it out like so. Yeah. And you literally want to monitor price action and see that break of structure, but you also want candle closures and maintaining price action above that level. You don't, you don't. So essentially what you want is corporation. Yeah. If there's no corporation, look to exit the trade. There will always be a better trade in the future. There's always another 1 to 10, 1 to 20 right around the corner. There's no point just uh, fixating on the one trade you're currently in. So obviously, wait for this to come up, break that level of structure, and maintain above. Once that happens, what I do is I bring my stop to break even. So this way, whatever happens, 
I will leave the trade untouched. I will not lose anything, yeah? Let's just say this decided to actually break this level of structure, but it mitigated an SC and this actually comes down against me. I'm fine because my stop loss is at break even. I haven't lost anything. And even better, I can now look at the market from an unbiased perspective because let's face it, when you enter a position, yeah, all your brain thinks and sees is all the p possible ways this could go up because obviously that's what you want. But you're not actually looking at the potential ways this could go down. And obviously, I'm I'm a, I'm a victim of this. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have like fallen victim to this. But let's just say you are taken out. Now you can start looking at potential shorts because you're like, OK, well, we've broken this level. We've mitigated this. We'll probably have a return into some level here where I can like, start to take this and swing it to the downside. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of bringing your stop to break even. Uh, let's say that this actually, <coughs> let's say this actually didn't happen, right? And we came down. The reason we bring our stop to break even is because we know, if we're following market structure, that this retracement won't go lower than this point here, and we've actually entered at the best position because. This will probably just make some sort of retracement, mitigate some form of an inefficiency or something, and then this will actually start making movement to the upside. And that's basically what you want. You want prices to start coming and taking out, obviously, all these levels of liquidity, all these uh, previous highs. And that's basically how to manage your trade from, a, like, a, a sorry, a um, risk-free perspective. Now, obviously, like I said, if we just come up, spike and drop, I would look to take the trade out because this shows me that I that we just came up to purge whatever liquidity was above this point and now we're probably going to move to the downside and break this level here. So that's, that's the only time, that's why I say it's very important to monitor because if you don't have maintenance and uh, candle closures above this level, then I'm not really going to look to hold it, I'll, I'll just disregard the whole trade. Uh, probably leave, take my profits, whatever it was. And uh, just make sure that, you know, I'm not I'm not too emotionally attached to my position. Now, another important thing to take into account is this. If price comes up, right, and we didn't break the high and we've kind of like started to do this. You don't bring your stop to break even until you see this high purge. Now, why I say this. Is because let's say this happened and you, you're getting, you know, you're getting scared, fear starts to set in and you're like, oh, I don't want to lose. Um, let me just bring my stop to break even. Well, sometimes what you see is that price will probably come back down, tap your SC again and then run. And just because you didn't, you couldn't stomach this here, you've now missed out on this entire move here, which is just obviously not ideal. Um, obviously, when something like this happens, what you kind of need to understand is that we've now created equal highs here. So there's liquidity present. So that tells me that we're probably going to come up and purge this. And even if we do come down and recap entry, my stop loss is below here anyway. This is, it's just one of the risks you're going to have to take. Trading comes with risk, right? So what you're basically doing is trying to find the best risk to take this is probably going to come back down even if it does tap and goes a little further and we we take out this liquidity this could just bang take out this liquidity and then we start making new structure to the upside and then your your cylinder trade that's when you have your bos oh let me just remove that that's when you have your bos here and then that's when you can comfortably bring your stop loss to break even because obviously following market structure, we're not going to go lower than this point anymore after we have our BOS here. And also, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it for um, managing the trade. Obviously, it works the same way if it's uh, if it's in the sell position. You need to wait for that last, um, last low to be broken, and then you bring your stop to break even. Uh, that's just the most important part. Look at the last low here, for example, and here. Make sure there's cooperation to the downside and it's not, it's not just a liquidity grab. Wait for that low to break. For example, we did here and then bring your stop loss to break even. Risk-free to trade. 
uh, always be happy to take partials whenever whenever you really want to be honest and yeah that's just the way to kind of play it um also this is a um i've spoken about this in some of the zooms pretty sure i've um discussed this with probably ran through this with a couple couple of you but it's the uh so let me just make some notes for you guys here so stop loss to break even only after last point of support or last point of interest um now the 10 pip rule is this so let's say you enter here right to i mean i kind of treat this like tips for your trade you know like um it's like a little extra on top of what you're gonna make and this doesn't really um it might be very small, but if you keep practicing this, at the end of the month, this will add up, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So let's say you enter, let's say, uh, let's say 10 pips is up here, yeah? For example, what you want to do is enter two positions, and you, you want to kind of have your, you want to have the same stop loss. Now, you have a choice here. If you want to be more risky, you can do 1% risk each. But you also need to keep in mind that if this doesn't, if this just does, uh, if you if this comes down to entry and it kind of does this and bang, that you will risk losing 2%. Or if you're more risk aversive and you don't want to take that much of a risk, you're not kind of too sure about the trade, you could do 0.5% risk and obviously the total will be a 1% risk of the overall trade. So what you want to do is when price comes down, you enter with two positions. Now, one of them, let's say your profit was like somewhere up there, right? Your one of the positions you take out completely. So you take the whole profit at ten at ten pips. Now, why I say ten pips is because sometimes what you tend to see is yeah. Let me actually show you a better example. Let's say this was down here. Sometimes when you enter, what you kind of see is a reaction. But sometimes we might have a liquidity purge and we drop, right? But if you took your ten percent, sorry, if you took your ten pips there, you would have grabbed like a nice. Uh, let me just delete this bigger trade. You would have grabbed a nice two two point six percent, right? And then if the trade were turned down against you, you would have lost the other percent of the. I'm oh, sorry, of the other trade, and you would have got out with what one point six percent. Now, if you keep practicing this, let's say you take two free trades a week. And two is sometimes it's obviously going to be is most of the time sorry it's going it's going to be more than um sorry if, so if we do ten pips for this and your usual stop loss is going to be like you know a couple of pips uh let me just make this more realistic uh with ten pips yeah no nah. all right. Bang, 10 pips on the dot, right? And let's see, your stop loss is like 3 pips. You're going to bag a nice 3%, and even if it does come down and take you out, you've bagged 2%. And if it does continue on, and you take both trades, let's say uh, the other trade you took out, like, and now you took a nice 10% on that, you're going to add 3% on top of that, so you actually got out with 13%. Now, if you keep practicing this, all these small little 3% at the end of the month, it will add up. Let's say you take... um. How much let's say you take let's say you take three three trades a week right and all these 3.33 percent will add up so that's what uh three six nine and then four so you're gonna you're gonna have basically another like 30 to 40 percent a month and that's just your tips so if you take three percent on all these 10 pip trades right and you take three trades a week and you, you consecutively are bagging all these small 10 pip trades at the end of the month you're gonna you're gonna bag yourself minimum 20 percent 10 percent 15 percent and that's that's just the percentage you're gonna get on these trades not even accounting your larger 10 20 percent uh swings 
So yeah, that's just a 10 pip rule. It's definitely something I highly recommend all of you exercising because it basically just means regardless of the outcome, you're, you're, you're getting out the trade with some sort of profit. If let's just say you, you, um, you take your 10 pips here and your second trade is now running, right? So this is now your second trade, which you, you actually wanted to swing higher. And obviously it just comes up to some point and then actually just decides to come against you and hit your stop loss. You would have, you would have, you obviously, you obviously would have taken out partials at some point at these breaks of structures. Your stop loss would have been at break even, and you basically came out with no loss. This is basically how to be bulletproof in your trades. You really need to understand how to manage your trades really well. And then essentially, this is just, like if you do this well, it's going to be impossible for you to lose. Exercise your 10 pips. Take your two three percent, and even if it does come back against you, you're only going to lose one percent. So you would have got out the trade with something, and then you obviously can like obviously as I said at the end of the month, all those will add up, and it would just be um, it would just be a better way for you to kind of like feel more confident in your trades and be less prone to um, getting letting your emotions get in the way of like successful positions basically. But yeah, besides that, I don't really have much else to um, to talk about. Oh, let me just try. You know what? I'll show you guys an example of trade setup and looking at uh looking at how to do this properly. So obviously here, this is a nice zero GBP setup. So we came down, all right? We came back up, and we had some uh, liquidity resting above this high here. And we didn't really break um, below uh, this level here after whatever this mitigated, which told me that nine times out of 10, we're probably going to come mitigate this 15 minute inefficiency. And what we also had were equal lows below here. So I know there's liquidity present and we're going to come down and purge those like we did here. So after we come up and hit the initial point of interest, what you want to do, replay this, bang, what you want to do, Let's go to your lower time frame and here's basically how you should have played this. Seeing as when we came up, this is where we tapped our uh, POI, this low here would have been our last point of interest. So when this broke, I would have been comfortable in taking the trade. Now look here, we didn't, we only came down, we didn't have candle closures below nor maintaining price action below here. So I wouldn't have been too comfortable taking the trade anywhere here because we also, we still run the likelihood of, you know, continuing higher. So let's just carry out, carry on price action and see what happened. Okay. Let's just go on. Okay. Now we have strong break, right? Now we have a strong break and um, now I can like start looking for entry positions, right? So I'm like, okay, we had a break here. I'm going to put my... You start looking for entry, we've got a small inefficiency right here, like so. I can put a short position here, have my stop loss, you know, 1.8 pips right there, and start swinging this for like these lows down here. That's like 20% there, right? So what we see, price came up, tap. And run now what i would have done personally was wait for this bio, this this low here to break strongly before i bring my stop loss to break even and why because even though we had a nice reaction off of that entry we still ran the risk of this coming up retapping entry and then dropping right this is just your a beautiful prime example of why you need to wait for a clean break here that's the most important. So I would have held, held. See how we're like hovering um, near our entry. Like you need to, you need to be able to stomach this, right? And then what we see, if we come on. See, look, look at that, look at that impulse there. That would have been enough to shake, to shake people up. Oh, we came close, bang. That would have been, that would have been my signal here. Boom, clean break, strong break, price action, maintaining below structure, 
I would have brought my stop loss to break even. Uh, is this, when, when is this 10 pips in? Boom, look at that beautiful 10 pip brought exercise as well. I would have taken my 10 pips. So I would have took what? Where's 10 pips? Here. So I would have taken five, look, I would have taken 5% off this trade, right? And then I would have had another trade running. So at this point, if this even came up and purged my stop loss, I still would have got out of the trade with 4%. And that's really good. So let's just remove that. So that's 5% off that, off that 10 pip. And let's just say my stop, my full take profit was here. Play this out. <clears throat> see how this actually turns out. Now let's go to the three minute. Speed this up a little bit. Bang. We actually came, we hit our take profit, whatever, let's just say it was something previously in the past. So that's 22% plus the 5%, 27%. Those 10 pips will add up. Exercising your um, break off structure properly would also give you just a peace of mind. You know, you know what you're looking for after you've taken a trade. So yeah, besides that, I don't really have much else to talk about. If you guys have got any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, everything's pretty self-contained in the video. So hopefully uh, this was enough for you, to guys, for you guys to understand how to properly manage your trades. But yeah, besides that, thank you guys for listening and on to the next.